Welcome to Just Minding My Business Media, where you get information that you can use. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. But just a quick reminder, make sure you subscribe to Just Minding My Business on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Share us with your family, friends, and colleagues. And remember, engage with us by leaving a review or a comment because your support keeps this podcast going and growing. Well, I am so happy to bring to Just Mind of My Business today. This is going to be so juicy, y'all. I got Andrea Libro Libros. Did I say that right? You got it. You got All it. Friday now, who is a business and life coach specializing in working with unapologetically ambitious women entrepreneurs from a variety of industries a speaker and host of the Time to Level Up podcast, Andrea guides her clients to combine big thinking with solid systems that work together to unleash their success and find the freedom of time, money, and energy they crave. She, exci she is excited about the release of her book, She Thinks Big. The Entrepreneur Woman's Guide to Moving Past the Messy Middle and into the Extraordinary in the Fall. Wow. Welcome, Andrea. Thanks for having me. And actually, the book was released in the fall. It's already out there in the world. Okay, so we can go grab it. We can. We can. Absolutely. So, small business owners... The word small business, why do we need to ditch that? I think we definitely need to ditch the small part, right? Yeah. Yes. We definitely need to ditch the small part. Yes, because every business is big to the business owner themselves and they're offering big services to the world. Yes, I agree. And then when I read that, it was like, okay, if you continuously call yourself small, then mentally you're playing small. A hundred percent. And that's how I equated it. I was like, okay, I'm going to stop saying that word small. <laughs> yeah, because we need to do some big thinking in order to grow these small businesses, right? Yes. 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 And you also talk about knowing your worth. Yes. And that's a, a big one for a lot of small businesses. It is. And it sometimes is. they are afraid to ask for the money. Right. Right. They're definitely asked. That's a huge fear, right? Of asking for what you believe you're worth. Usually as a small business owner or as a business owner, you know, there's, you've got three beliefs that kind of come in conflict when you are asking or wanting to ask for what you work, your worth, you know, you the belief number one is believing that you know what you're doing. So I think 99% of the time, we do think we know what we're doing, that we have skills and we're, you know, have experience. Mm -hmm. Could we have more skills and experience? Sure, but we've got enough. Next belief is believing that people need what you have, which I think our rational brain, 99% of the time, does believe that what we have to offer is something that people need and will value. So those are two beliefs. Usually they get check marks. But the third belief is believing in the, what I call emotional and financial maturity of the client or the customer. Are they emotionally and financially mature enough to understand what you're worth and why you're charging what you're charging? Mm -hmm. And there lies the problem. Like we have a fear around whether or not they are emotionally and financially mature and will understand, or will they judge us, mm. right? So there's a fear of judgment. And all of that keeps us playing small and thinking small. Mm. So the drama around what you're worth is really a conflict of those three beliefs, and it's painful, yes, and it creates it a lot of pain. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And the latter one that you mentioned you know, making sure that who you're giving this price to is mature and really understand your the value of why you're charging it. And right. a lot of people 
don't. A lot of people don't, 100%. And so is it your job, this kind of begs the question, is it your job to help them understand that, to convince them? Sometimes you have to do a little like explaining of what you're offering, mm -hmm. but in the end, we can't control what they're thinking. We can offer them all of these, all the information. We can even offer them some things they might want to think, like I call them thought options. Mm -hmm. But in the end, we can't control that, but we can control our own thinking and, and, and accessing our own thought options is one of the five tenets of thinking big. Yes. Okay. Now, since you hit on that thinking big and these five yep. things, so what are the five things? <laughs> what are the five things? So um, I use the acronym TRUST or T-R-U-S-T to explain or hit upon the five things that all big thinkers do, must do. So big thinkers are really able, number one, to, to access what I call future you. So future you is the person that is getting what they're worth, is the person that is continuing to grow their business, is the person that is reaching the level of success that they're looking for. You have to go to that future you who's maybe a year or two or three years out and ask them what to do today. So future, so big thinkers can access future you. And then they have to use this acronym TRUST. So the T in TRUST stands for thought options. So it is an option to think that that client or customer will think your pricing is outrageous. That's an option. <laughs> you can believe it. Or you could believe they're totally going to get it. I don't even know why I'm hesitating. Okay. So those are two options. It's just like you could think that 50 degrees is an amazing, sunny, warm temperature, <laughs> or you could think 50 degrees is cold, right? It's like, you got options. You have options. So T stands for thought options. Okay. Okay. U stands for embracing the unknown. Okay. So we don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen if we buy a service and how it's going to affect us necessarily. We don't know how we're going to feel about something. There's so many unknowns. We live in a world of unknowns. We yeah. wish we didn't, but we do. So big thinkers are kind of okay with that. I mean, they too wish we knew everything, but we don't. And big thinkers are okay with the uncertainty of everything. So again, this kind of goes back to what you're worth. The person that's going to say no to you because they don't think they think you're overpriced, they probably there's maybe part of it, but they're also probably a little unsure of like, oh my gosh, what if I did start working with this person and it did start to create change? And then, oh my, will I be able to handle the change and what's going to happen? So they're a little bit afraid mm -hmm. of that uncertain, that unknown and that uncertainty. Okay. So that's kind of how those two are tied together, but U stands for embrace uncertainty. Okay. Then, um, I forgot R, didn't I? Oh my gosh, I can't even spell today, Ida. That's <laughs> okay. It's so okay. I was it's like, wait okay. a second, what happened? T R. So I'll go back to R. R stands for real problem. Okay. So the real problem, besides the fact that I skipped it for a minute ago, <laughs> the real problem is not really a problem at all. The real problem is a negative feeling that we don't want to experience, mm. right? We don't like to feel rejection. We don't want to feel guilt or doubt. We don't want to feel frustrated. So 99% of the time, why you're kind of stuck playing small is because you don't want to venture out of these feelings that you're already familiar with. And you're fearing that if, you know, the unknown and you're fearing that it's going to be uncomfortable and you're fearing that maybe this is if you do x it's going to take away from y and we don't want those feelings uh -huh. so the real problem isn't really a problem it's just a feeling and big thinkers are okay with feeling all the feelings mm. okay you gotta get used to feeling all the feelings yeah so that's what r stands for so t is uh thought options 
R is real problem. U is unknown or uncertainty. S is secure support. Okay, so S is secure support. And all big thinkers know that they need to secure support. Mm -hmm. They need not just family and friends supporting them. They need someone on the outside supporting them because your family and your friends, they're doing their job and they love you. And that's really their job to, to love you and to um, support you in that way. But their job is not necessarily to support you in a business sense when the going gets rough. Yes. Right. So you need to have a um, team in your corner. You need a coach or a mentor or an advisor or someone that's going to guide you through when you can't even, when you're too close to everything, when you're stuck in your own little peanut butter jar and you can't read the label, right? you need someone <laughs> that's going to be able to read the label. And, you know, this securing support is not a new concept because when we're children, we have all kinds of support, even sort of imaginary support, like a security blanket or a stuffed animal. Yes. But yes. as an adult, like that is all ripped off and you are out there and you don't have any support. So it is up to you, the adult, to secure the support. So that's what S stands for. Okay. Okay. Then the last T in trust. The last T in trust stands for take action. Mm. So you can't really just sit around and hope that things change. You can't wish for everything. I mean, I'm all about wishing, but you know, wishing isn't going to get you really where really where you need to go. So no. you need to take action, but also that action has to be thoughtful. You don't just take blind action. You've got to take action based off of this big thinking. So when I see my clients who have 10x their revenue or have created a business that's now got multiple offerings and a team of people behind it. Um, they all have taken action, but their action has been very planned mm -hmm. and they have used big thinking to support the plan. Yes, absolutely. Wow. This is yep. so on time, Andrea. So how do people connect with you, my dear? The best way for people to connect with me is to go to Andrea's with an S, links with an S, andreaslinks.com. And you can find a link to my podcast there, the Time to Level Up podcast, a link to the book, a link to all of my social media platforms. I'm usually on Instagram most and LinkedIn. Um, and you can also find a link to two quizzes, free quizzes I have on my website, which really can help you either figure out why are you sort of stalled out in your business or why are you stalled out in your life? So mm -hmm. Andrea's with an S, links with an S dot com. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about smart goals. Yeah. Let's talk, let's about, talk that. about that because that's kind of one of those things that's been engraved in a lot of people's brain. Yes. Eight smart goals. But what's wrong with creating smart goals? Well, I love SMART goals. I actually love smarter goals, okay, which have an a E and an R at the end for exciting and risky. But I also love wild goals. <laughs> <laughs> it, the W-I-L-D. I also like wild goals because if you create a smarter goal that's specific and measurable and time-bound and actionable and relevant and exciting and, and risky... You have to do probably things that are outside of your comfort zone in order to achieve it, right? Or else you probably already would have done it or you wouldn't even be writing it as a goal, right? So the W in wild stands for willing to not be so good at it. Or I could use a little expletive in there too, but willing to not be so good at it. You have to be willing to treat this like a science experiment to Let's try X to see how far it gets us. Let's try Y to see how far it gets us. Let's do something for 30 days to see if it moves the needle. And you might not be so good at it. 
And you might actually, I mean, I like to say there's no such thing as failing, but you might be failing at something. So smarter goals help keep us kind of on track and give us direction and help us decide whether or not we've reached it or not because they're measurable. And if you, yes, is it a yes or a no? But that W in wild has to play a part in it because you've got to be willing to not be so good at getting there. Yes, and I have to wholeheartedly agree with you there because I know people that they want to they want to have all of these things in place before they start. Yes, what they don't realize is it it's not that way. You have to start. Yep, to perfect. <laughs> yes. Yes. You have to start to perfect. You've got to start. So you got to take action. Mm -hmm. You've got to do something, right? You got to start somewhere and it may not be the perfect thing at the beginning. It may right. not look so great, but you do have to be willing to work at it, willing to not be so good at it to get where you want to go. Absolutely. And that's how you get good at it. By doing yes. Yes. I mean, uh, yes, a hundred percent. Yes. Yep. And, and if you ever think, if you ever look at a baby, it's like when they first, they start, first they wallowing on their bellies. Yep. Then they yep. realize, oh, I got knees. Let me see what yes. I can do. <laughs> and then right. they start, then they start, they, they raise up, holding on to stuff. Yep. Oh, I'm a, my feet are moving. Wow. This is, this is, this is awesome. Let me see what else I can do. <laughs> And it's the right. same thing. Yes, 100%. The same thing. It's the same thing. Like, and also we don't, um, we don't, like a baby falls. We're not sitting there criticizing the baby, right? Right, right. We're not, because we're just like, okay, the, that's what happens. This is how this goes. Yeah. Yep. So, exactly. and in that WILD acronym, the I stands for ignite and impossible. So sometimes what your goals need to feel a little bit impossible, but they have to light you up. Yes. They have to make you excited. They have to, um, you have to be ready, to, ready and willing to tackle it. So that's why I like the I being impossible and ignite. And then L this is an interesting one. And I, you know, I should really have an E in here, but let it be easy. What if this doesn't have to be so hard? What if this could just be easy? We try to make things way harder than they are. Mm -hmm. Way hard. And I actually think sometimes when we stay thinking small, we make it harder. Yeah. And just going for it. And just going for it. And a lot of what I do is I help people go for it. I help people decide that they're going to go for it and support them along the way. Because going it alone, also not so easy. No, no, not you, so easy. You stay in your head too much. A hundred percent. And then you don't have that other perspective. Yes. To help you see things differently. <laughs> yes, totally. Totally. You don't have your, that you're stuck in your own peanut butter jar. Yes, that, I like that. I like yep. that. It's gonna be my new thing. You yes. in your own peanut butter jar. They gonna be you looking at me like, what are jar. you talking yep. about? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, so this all sounds wonderful, but there's a scared person out there that just don't know where to begin. There is definitely a scared person out there that doesn't know where to begin. Sometimes I don't know where to begin, right? So. I would say to that person, number one, you have to have a little chat with yourself mm -hmm. and tell yourself that you're going to be okay. You're going to figure this out because guess what? You've figured out everything up until now anyway. You've already, we have evidence that you will figure it out. We don't have evidence of how it's going to go. And that's what you're really wanting because you're wanting to feel in control. Mm -hmm. But we do have evidence that you're going to figure it out. So that's number one. Number two is don't go it alone. Mm -hmm. Don't go it alone. You need, you need resources, time, money, and energy. And you also need support. So mm -hmm. sometimes we think about, oh, if I had more money, this would be so much easier. 
or if I had more time, this would be so much easier. Or if I had um, more brain power, this would be so much easier. And yes, maybe that's true, but you also need someone to kind of go alongside you or guide you or be a Sherpa. And a lot of times if we're talking about business, the best person is not necessarily your family member. Because remember, they're just there to love you. Yes. That's their job. Right. That's exactly. their job. Yes, you have yeah. to have somebody that's pretty much on the same road to a certain degree, been there, done that, yep. and can guide you through it. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean, because I always say we're either getting ready to go into it, we in it, or we're just coming out. Those are the three scenarios in, yes. it, in any given situation. Right. Right. And somebody is out there to help you. A hundred percent. Yep. Somebody's there. And you also have to trust that you're going to find them. Yeah. You and you will. Them. You will. You a hundred percent will. And you might think of go back to that science experiment. Like you might have to sort of try out a few people to figure out who the right one is. Mm -hmm. And that's okay too. Yes, it is. But I always go with prayer. Because prayer yes. always works because if I ask God for something, I don't even have to look. He'll just put it right there. And I recognize, that's a, the big piece, is recognizing, that's oh, terrific. here's what I was looking for. But you have to be, your eyes have to be, or your brain, your whole, your body being, everything has to be ready to receive it. Like has yes. to be on alert. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Your podcast. When, yes. Yeah, I, I'm already loving your energy. <laughs> so my pod, the, the podcast is called Time to Level Up, but I'll let you in on a secret. The name is actually changing soon. It's going to be She Thinks Big Time. It's time to level up. But Time to Level Up, it's on all your favorite podcast players, all, all the places you're listening to us. It's on YouTube, too. All the places you're listening to us, you can find it. And you can also go to Andrea's with an S, links with an S.com to get a direct link to it. Uh, okay. And when, when does the new episodes come out? Every Tuesday. Okay. Every Tuesday, we have a new episode. And they, I, some of them are solo episodes, just me. Some of them are guests. Some of them are um, client stories. So it's a variety. Oh, that's good. That's yes. good because as women, we need all the support we can because we are, in terms of business, we have a different position because a lot of times we are mothers, you know, yep. we, we're running a family, you know, yep. married. So we have a whole different setup, so to speak. We do. <laughs> we, do. we do. So my podcast, I don't know if there are any male listeners, probably not. My podcast is geared towards women. Yes. And and it's like us coming together and people like you who are willing to help women to move through those emotional, that fear. Because, I mean, we always going through it all the time. Yes, you know, we are. All the we time. Are. Some yep. days we feel like we're on top of the world. Other days, the world is on top of us. <laughs> right, right. That's true. That's you know, totally true. so yep. I am grateful and honored to meet you and to definitely feel your vibrations in terms of your contribution to help women entrepreneurs, business owners make it to the top. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here to be able to share this with you. Absolutely. Audience. Absolutely. And one more question that I have for you. Sure. Uh, is what's the difference between between stuck stress and productive stress? Oh, Ida, we need a whole other episode for that. All right. Well, we can <laughs> we can just really quickly and we can yes. come back at another time and just talk about that. Sure. Um, so the difference really is when you're in stuck stress, it feels heavy you you don't take action so the intensity builds you kind of reach a point of diminishing returns like you've you've gotten to a place where it no longer is helpful to mm -hmm. even think about it anymore 
Okay. Like the worry is, is you're over the top with the worry. Um, it's also feels very constricting, mm. but if you can shift that and that takes a lot of belief, okay. That, that you will find the answer or that you will figure it out. If you can shift it into what I call progress or productive stress, you're moving forward. And with every action, it the stress dissipates. You feel you have momentum ver versus um, stoppage. Mm -hmm. you, you feel, um, I don't want to say excited, but there's a little bit of enthusiasm in what you're doing. And things start to move along. So stuck stress really is exactly what it sounds like. But I think I, I go further and say, it's it's a heavy, debilitating, not useful piece. And it, it's also then you lose your determination. Mm -hmm. But if you shift into progress stress, you're determined, you're energized by it. It becomes lighter as you take action. Things still could be hard, which is where the stress comes in. But you are moving forward and every action you take is actually useful and serving versus just digging yourself deeper into a hole. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense to me. Yep. Because I, I know when at some point, I think we've all been stuck. We have. And you're absolutely right. It is so heavy. Yes, it's super heavy. There's a whole chapter in the book, She Thinks Big, about stuck stress. Oh, yes. And how can people get the book again? So you can go to Amazon or your favorite bookseller and type uh -huh. in She Thinks Big and you'll find it. Or you can go to shethinksbigthebook.com. There's also a free toolkit that comes with the book. Or if you are someone that likes to have that paper in front of you, you can also get the workbook that goes with the book wherever you purchase the book. Okay. And your podcast is? Tuesdays. Every Tuesday. Every okay. Tuesday. Okay, wherever you get your podcast. So ladies. Yes. time to level up. All righty there. So thank you so much, Andrea. You are such a delight. Thanks for having that. me. Absolutely. And we definitely have to do this again. Yes, we will.